The monitor has a very simple look to it, bezels are small and the front buttons aren't too eye-catching. Around the back you'll find dual HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, USB-C and an audio out. I really like that the monitor has the power supply built in because it makes your desk look cleaner because there's no adapters, but sadly the USB-C port won't power your MacBook or your Ultrabook, so you'll still need separate power for your laptop. On the left side of the monitor there's an SD card reader and dual USB 3.0 ports. I really like how fast the SD card reader is and the USB 3 port. The stand of course also comes with a handy hole in the rear to route your cables through and at the top there's a handle so if you do have to move it around you can easily do that as well. This monitor comes with two hoods so right now mine is in landscape mode and you can also have a hood in portrait mode which is awesome and both of these hoods have a little slidey thingy at the top so you can drop your calibration tool through there. That's a little feature that I really like. Now while the panels themselves have this really nice cloth coating to them um, the plastic joints are a little bit reflective, so that's a bit distracting. I really wish BenQ could use that new ultra black paint, for example. Let's talk about the panel itself now. So as I said, it's an ultra high definition, so TE840 by 2160, 27 inch IPS model. It's only 60 Hertz refresh rate, so if you're a gamer, you might want to look elsewhere. The 10-bit panel comes with an anti-glare coating and it covers 99% of Adobe's RGB color space but 100% of Rec. 709, sRGB and 93% of DCI-P3. And this monitor is also Technicolor certified. Now this monitor was one of the first HDR monitors and that means there were no standards back then. A few weeks ago we had our first on the front panel but BenQ also includes this super handy hotkey puck like it's really a handy way to navigate the on-screen display. On here are four programmable buttons, so you can just set them to color profiles with just one press of a button you switch color profiles instead of going through the menu. It also comes with a little d-pad so you can still navigate the menu and set stuff up using the hotkey puck. A few really cool features that are in the on-screen display are picture by picture and picture in picture. And this is awesome to, for example, show the same image twice left and right side but with a different color profile applied to each one of them. So if you're exporting in Rec. 709 and in sRGB you can see the difference side by side which is really handy. This monitor comes with Adobe RGB, sRGB, black and white, Rec. 709, DCI-P3, HDR, DICOM and darkroom presets. You can then also add three calibration profiles and another two custom profiles. Moving to image quality then. The image is very sharp being 4K 27 inch, backlight bleed is almost non-existent and ghosting is kept to what you would expect from an IPS panel, again this is not really for gamers. Colors are accurate to a delta E of less than 2 all over the panel, that's awesome, you know the color consistency is really good with this one. With a contrast of only 1000 to 1, you may expect the blacks to not be as good but they're actually really black, really consistent throughout the panel once again, you know colors are very consistent with this panel. And also they don't show this weird grey tone to them, they're actually black, although not to the level of an OLED. Overall the image on this display looks great, it's very sharp and vivid but in a natural realistic way. 